Hello, I'm doing a uh, tutorial here on how I did a mini press break. I welded it myself from scratch. And I was gonna show you guys how I put it together. Um, there's about a thousand ways to do this. So, this is what it looks like. It's ready for paint. I've done all the welding on it, cutting the fitting, the fabricating. Um, total time up until this point, if I did it start to finish, probably would have been about three hours. Um, just because I had the uh, equipment and I've done another one of these before. There's, here's mine. So that one's mine. And this one is for a buddy of mine over in Lafayette, Louisiana, that I put together. So you can do these a, a lot of different ways. There's a lot of different um, ways to fabricate them and put them together. Um, I happen to uh, like this design because it gives me enough room. If I want to take the threading down and take these all the way up, I have a lot of room here. If I have a bracket, I need to like unbend, if you will. If it's got a bend in it, I need to take um, the bend out of it and make it flat. If it's an um, obscure piece or something, about 90, well over 90% of the time, I'm just doing flat plates which should fit under here. I'm not gonna, don't freak out, I'm not gonna bend this, but I'm just giving you an example here so you can see. So I put this under here and then you just, obviously just crank it down and it'll bend it. Um, so this is what it looks like. I'll kind of walk you through it. This base plate here, I think that was 316 steel. I had that sitting around. This tubing is fairly thick walled. I don't know what it is in fractions of an inch, but it's, it's halfway between five and six, 64, whatever that is, I don't know. Imperials drive me nuts sometimes. Um, but it's it's fairly thick walled tubing. It's not gonna deflect. This bottle jack, I mean, you could have a half ton. It's plenty for doing, if they made one, it's plenty for doing something like this, for bending pretty much whatever you have at it. I made one with two 20 ton jacks and uh, it was a huge machine. I mean, it was able to accommodate a four foot wide panel and we put it to the test and it was able to bend uh, one inch um, steel. So that was pretty cool. Um, but you can see my MIG welds throughout here. Like if I'm doing a horizontal one, I do it sideways. So I kind of go like this, like a sideways U. And you can just do it around. Um, same thing here. See, pretty little welds right there. This is going the other direction. Um, these down here, I probably did circles. I definitely did circles going around the pipe here. This pipe right here, um, that's a pretty tight fit. So it just telescopes over it, which is fine for one side. But what I found is you don't want to have both sides because when you're putting this together, unless you have a specific jig to make sure these things are absolutely true, go up and down, you're gonna have problems. Um, because they deflect when they when you weld them, you know, stuff bows, and it just gets off by a fraction of an inch, inch and uh, it'll bind when, when it's going up and down. So you can see this is much bigger. You can see there's a little bit of room with it. So between the two, this is a pretty good guide, but this will retract easily. It's not going to bind. So you don't have to have it exactly spot on. Um, this wood I had sitting around, <clears throat> but you can see here, this is just angle iron and a cut. I fit in here. This is more angle iron. The punch I made out of half inch thick steel. Um, platform here, 3 16 um, I didn't do any gussets on the bottom side. If it was something really super heavy duty, I would have done a triangular gusset on the bottom side right there. But you can see these little guides that I put in. These are just other little, uh, snippets of angle iron that I cut off and put in here. Here it's just an extra piece of tubing I had set around for this. So this, this just kind of sits in there when, when you're not using it. Kind of cool. And it's ready to be powder coated, so um, I have a big enough oven that can accommodate this. It's not for a household, but I lucked out in Goodwill one time I was able to find one of these. So a normal size oven is like this. You can see a coffee cup. And then this thing I got for, I don't know how much it is, but it runs on 110. You just plug it into the wall and it's able to accommodate a fairly size, good size piece. So I'm looking forward to that. So we'll paint it. And Take a look at it and see on the flip side. Yep, there we are. We just uh, took it out of the oven, letting it cool. It's great. Let's 
some of the metals pitted, I, it's not a showpiece or anything like that, so I didn't, but um, if I really care that much, I would have cleaned it up, I would have ground it down a little bit, and a little bit smoother, but still, for all intents and purposes, um, it's going to work just fine. Burnt copper color. So, it's nice that it looks nice, but um, it has to be functional, of course, so had a piece of scrap steel sitting around that I wanted to do a, a bend on and test it. Of course it did just fine. So it's useful for brackets and flat bar or anything else I want to bend in there. Anywho. So one other thing, I was doing some test bends and um, the middle part here did deflect a little bit. It was a little bit too much for my liking so um, I could have done gussets but um, there's not really much room to do them because it would kind of obstruct the the hooks here on the back side and getting this in and out when you need to pop these off so the easiest thing actually to do is just to run a piece of round rod on the inside in this case it was some uh, some pretty good sized rebar that i had sitting around um which just fit inside of it and uh, will be strong enough to stiffen this up so i had to go back and weld it and press this up a little bit but um we're all good to go now